Here's something that I've seen that happens time and time again with a lot of good developers. They end up with the wrong design or wrong permit. And um, most of the time it happens because what they've decided to put on a block of land or the design that they've decided um, either doesn't suit the market or um, it's, uh, it's, it costs a lot to build. And particularly this happens once they've got the permit, they've got it in their hand, they didn't follow the steps that I've already discussed earlier. They don't follow the steps. They've got the permit. They've spent their 30, 40,000 to get the permit through council and only to find out when they go to a builder, they say, oh, it's going to cost you X amount of money to build this thing. And then when you find out, okay, this is what you paid for land. This is what you spend on, on your planning permit or your, or your DA. And that's what the cost of build is. And then the penny drops and they say, ah, I, I won't be able to sell it. So there's, I won't have any money in it. Or they say it requires a lot more cash injection from me and I can't really take it to the next level. So it comes back on the market saying site available with plans and permits. All the work has been done. It is for you. Go and grab it. But when you go and look at it and the price they want and what the site can give you, nine out of ten times it's very hard to stack it up. So at least in Victoria, I've seen that it's, it's very hard to stack up a site that's got plans and permits. So um, being a good developer, it's, it's good, but you got to make sure that um, you get the right design and you, you develop something or you get a permit for something that's, that's going to sell in the market. Great developers study the market before they sit down with their design consultants. So they understand what a design and product fit, fit is which basically means whether or not it's environmentally sustainable design, it's a cost-effective design. I can give you an example. For example, you wouldn't build inverted living where you haven't got views to the views to the bay or views to the ocean or views to the beach or whatever. So um, that's, that's part of that. And there are so many different things uh, here. Um, it also, uh, I'll give you another example. Another example is that a lot of good developers can't determine whether or not they should put a basement or car stackers. And a lot of people, they even if they make car stackers, they, they I just came across a site recently. It had a permit for 11 apartments ready to go and they were asking too much. And I, I really liked the site because it was in a very good location. But when we actually got down to looking at the plans, we looked at the basement and the basement was gonna cost us twice uh, had it had it designed in a different different way, uh, so we decided not to go ahead with it. So these are the things that a lot of people, a um, lot of good developers miss out. And uh, if you understand what these factors are, you are careful when designing them, and you're talking to your consultants, and you direct your consultants to be able to come up with something based on what based on the brief that you give them. And even if you agree to go ahead with something, you already know that, okay, this is what I've got to allow for it. And it still stacks up. So I am going to go ahead with it. So these are the things that you got to know when you, when you get into, um, get into the design phase, uh, obtaining permits, they go, you got to understand what is the DA and the, or the planning permit or the BA, which is the building permit process works. So, so that's, uh, with the permit, good developers think that everyone is their customer. This is related to marketing nonetheless. And a um, lo lot of people think that if they build something, they will come and they will buy it. Uh, it doesn't work like that. So you've got to make sure that you understand the product place, promotion price and so on, and um, how that works with the kind of product that you're developing. And you've got to choose your customers and fire the ones that hurt your ability to deliver the right story. So say for example, if you are developing something in an area and, and you've done your research to understand um, this is what the market is at, that's what they want in this area, that's what's selling, this is what I should develop. It doesn't matter what a handful of people might tell you that uh, maybe instead of two batteries you should do three batteries. Um, so you, 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 you make an informed decision. So understand that you are going to appeal to us to a specific market and don't try and develop something that you want to cater to everybody. So um, 
um, design develop product uh, for a carefully researched audience and you should know what your customer wants and great developers understand how to market their developments they understand the 80 20 rule then i'm not going to reveal that here it's available in the course they also understand the the future property supply in that area they understand the product place promotion price uh, they understand how to pick up their agent they understand the pre-sale process and they know how to monitor the progress uh, of their campaign it's not something like you handed it over to your agent and yeah everything will be okay you got to be on him uh, you got to be on your agent uh, at all the time and keep monitoring the progress of your development so um, make sure you do that the biggest bungle in development is construction and you don't need to know anything i'm not a builder but i work with a builder but i'm not a builder and i'm doing a development i live in melbourne but i'm doing a development uh, in brisbane which is about to finish it's nine apartments and uh, I'm, I'm, I've dealt with other builders. So it's not necessarily that you've got to be a builder. So it's not like that I've got an edge because I do development here. I'm also doing developments interstate uh, where um, I've, I've outsourced the whole thing to another builder. So you've got to understand um, a lot of people, a lot of good developers, so to speak, don't understand how to choose a builder, what goes in the contract, what kind of insurances they need to have and they don't know how to check and protect themselves. So good developers pay um, uh, top dollar for variations. Uh, don't get me wrong, they do it all the time. And you gotta understand that a builder makes money um, if, you, if you have variations. So, and at, at the time of the variation, you can't really go back and negotiate with them because you've already negotiated a fixed price contract with them. So you gotta understand how these things work. So great developers understand everything they need to cover their backside and they understand the type of contractors, the contractor selection criteria, uh, types of different contracts that you can do with the builder. They understand the tender process, um, what should be in a building contract um, so that that covers their backside. And before construction commencement, what happens and the things that they need to know, how does the progress claim uh, happens and the retention clause and the builders and defects liability period and insurances and how to make sure that the builder towards the end has done its job properly. So these are the things that great developers know and it's all covered in the course. Um, they kick back and relax because they are building. Happens all the time. Um, it's a killer. You've got to understand it properly and a lot of good developers uh, get caught out with this. Once the construction starts, they kick back and relax thinking, oh, the construction started, I've got to do nothing now. Because once the construction started, the finance switches, there are no installments, there's not a lot you got to do. But, they, but people get complacent when construction starts. And that's the time you got to make sure that you line up all your ducks uh, for some, some things that are going to happen in future. So, um, most of the good developers, they get caught out by not having the titles ready in, in time. So you can't settle with your pre-sales until you've got your titles ready. And, to, and for you to be able to get all your titles ready, there are a whole lot of other work that has to be done in the background so that you have your titles ready in time when the construction uh, is, uh, is complete. So, so that you can settle within a week after you've been handed over your development. So... This causes delays in settlement, it costs you more in interest and it evaporates profits. It's because at that time, you have drawn down your complete construction loan. So whatever your construction loan is a million dollars or 1.5 mil or whatever, you are paying interest on the full amount. And if you haven't got that ready by that time, you're, you're paying anywhere between 400 to a thousand bucks a day, your settlements are delayed. So make sure that, um, you know, great developers make sure that they've got their eye on the ball and they've lined up all their ducks um, so that you can plan their subdivision. Uh, their plan of subdivision, they've got, to, they've got to plan that ahead of time. You've got to make sure that the occupancy permit, the builder gives them the occupancy permit um, quicker and settlement and handover packages are all ready uh, to rock and roll, basically. 
So um, these are some things that um, good developers do and great developers do. A lot of good developers usually don't have a post completion strategy in place. And it happens because they don't know what they will be left with at the end of it all. And that comes, that's related to your financial feasibility and having your cash flow all sorted out at the beginning of the project and making sure that you know exactly what's left out. It's very difficult to pinpoint the exact amount to the dollar or to the last cent um, that you'll be left with towards the end. But if you've done your feasibility quite correct, you should be in the, in, in the right range. And great developers have a carefully crafted wealth generation plan towards the end of it. And that actually stems from having the right mindset, uh, having the right strategy. What is your strategy going to be when you start, when you finish? Um, your goals or outcomes that you're expecting, your, your investing approach, your ability to do no money down deals and your strategy towards the end, which is basically are you going to develop and sell or are you going to develop and hold. So um, you've got to understand all of these and great developers do and I cover that in my course.